Hi and welcome back to the New Zealand Property Podcast and video series and today right beside me I have a, a guest that's been on quite a few times but not for a long time. Uh, Matthew Gilligan, welcome to the show. Thank you Mark, appreciate the invite. All right, um, and uh, so today we're talking DTIs, um, debt to income ratios, something the government have talked about for the last well, quite a few years mm-hmm. and, um, and they're looking at it again, once again very closely and maybe implementing it so we thought no, uh, no one better than Matthew Gilligan that if, um, if it, he knows all about it and if there's a cunning way to do something about it, <laughs> we might know our way <laughs> around it. Mm. But we, we, we may or may not get into those uh, points today. But debt to income, you know, what is it? It's, a, it's something that obviously um, getting lending based on your income and uh, it's a ratio of how much you earn to, to what it is. But uh, I'll let uh, Matthew, before we get to Matthew though, uh, just for those listeners that haven't seen you, haven't been here for a while, uh, tell us about uh, Gilligan Rowan Associates, which you started many couple of decades ago now. It's going back away, Mark. Yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. So my name is Matthew Gilligan. I'm a chartered accountant based in Newmarket uh, and I'm managing director of Gilligan Rowan Associates, which is a, um, a medium sized accounting firm specialising in property and tax structures. Uh, and these days I'm pretty much full time investor and I do uh, a fair bit of advisory work still for GRA clients around property investing. So development costings and you know should I or could I do something and what can I do with my land, that sort of stuff. I have a, a lot to do with that. Um, and, and actually tax plays a big part of that, so we dovetail the tax into the commercial side. Uh, but one of the things that uh, I am being asked more about and I've recently written a blog about is these DTI rules. And it's still early stages. Mm. It's still on the consultation phase, but we've had um, some direction uh, from what the rules might look like from the Reserve Bank. Um, so these are debt servicing ratios or debt to income ratios. Um, there was a consultation document put out last year by the Reserve Bank. All of the industry players, um, the investors, the banks, um, everybody submitted and nobody wants them. Mm-hmm. Everybody pushed back and said this is unnecessary. Um, New Zealand's banking system is the envy of um, the world, really. We have very, very low default rates. We have prudential lending code, sort of self-regulation within the banking system. Uh, Sure, we've got LVRs, but the banks pretty much stand on their own two feet, and uh, we have very low default rates because New Zealand banking's managed well. Um, So we've we've recently had the lay of the government go out, but they were very much a centralised command and and tell everybody what to do type... um, government and they were all over these DTIs, thought, thought it was a great idea along with Adrian or at the Reserve Bank. Um, personally I think it's nanny state stuff, we don't need it, the, the banking system's functioning well. Mm. Uh, but, but what are these rules? Well they're split into two, so there's um, a rule for residential lending on your family home and there's a rule for uh, residential lending on uh, investment property. And pretty much you divide any debt related to your family home by six and that's how much income you need for your family home to meet the debt servicing test, DTI test, debt debt to income ratio. And for any investment properties you've got, you divide your investment property debt by seven and that's how much income you need to service your your investment debt. So if you add the two numbers together, if you've got um, 600,000 on your family home, you need 100,000 to service that on the test. And if you've got 700,000 on your investment portfolio, divide by seven, you need 100,000 for that, add the two together, 200,000 would be your required income. Uh, There is talk of scaling, so they might scale your investment income, possibly. Um, The bank's still working through this, they don't know. So so like the the rent, for example? Yeah, they... All the rent, half the rent? They might take 90% of the rent rent or something like that. Um, And so you think, well, okay, is this going to be across the board on all lending? No, there are a series of exemptions which are quite helpful. Yep. Existing lending they're not going to apply to. So if you've got a refinance, you won't have to meet debt to income ratios on, on the proposed, uh, under the proposed rules on, on refinancing. Um, construction loans and loans for new builds you don't have to meet DTIs for. Um, bridging finance uh, loans for the Kaingora first home scheme, um, business loans and commercial property loans are all exempt, all that stuff's exempt. So this is just um, focused on residential lending for um, 
your family home and investment properties right. yep. with those exemptions. <coughs> just, just one thing, if uh, someone's earning, or well, household earning just sort of $100,000, mm. so you're saying your 600000 will be the, uh, the lending they'll get towards a new home, uh, towards a home. What's the maximum lending? The maximum lending they can get. Yeah, so it's a ratio. Yeah, so if they had a $300,000 deposit, then they could buy a $900,000 property. To take as a maximum, yeah. So, depending on their serviceability, of course. And so, this is one more rule coming in. You've yeah, still got to meet, of. you've got to meet the LVRs, mm. um, and you've got to meet the bank prudential lending code. And so, if you're ticking all of those boxes and your LVR, uh, sorry, your DTI is ticked, then in that example, $300,000 deposit by a $900,000 property, mm. Mm. yeah. Okay, and, and I guess the primary question everybody s asks is. Um, what impact will DTIs have? And I, I think it's going to be a real game of two halves here. Um, the bulk of the market will be unaffected because most people in New Zealand don't invest in investment property. And uh, you know they'll find it relatively easy, easy, especially if they've already got a home, to meet these, these ratios because over time their incomes have gone up and they've yep. been paying their debt down, won't have much impact on them at all. But I think it will adversely affect property investors because property investors tend to push the envelope and have as much debt as they can. They um, get a second job and pay the interest if they have to. They, they make it work because they know in 10 years' time the asset's going to be worth more. Mm -hmm. They can sell down and that's when they make their money. Um, and DTIs really constrict the banker's ability to give them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're... If you're a young couple, double income, no kids, or a professional that's emerging in your career, you've clearly got growth in your income, uh, the bank might, under current rules, be inclined to cut you some slack, or if they know that you're a good property developer and there's no income at the moment, or they're discounting your income because property development, the banks aren't taking it, but they cut you some slack because uh, you know, they, they know you're good for it, so to speak, and you've got a very good track record and character that the bank like. Um, those sorts of character assessments that the bank can make at the moment start to become fettered and restricted by these rules. So people pushing the envelope, I think, are going to be hurt, and there'll be less likelihood that people under these rules will be able to take the risk, and so it could start to interfere with supply, um, on the supply side, because where somebody would have had a go, they'll be concerned about DTIs, they'll be concerned about their ability to get bank finance, and it will just start to interfere with the market. I, I don't think they're necessary, and people who are marginal on cash flow are just going to be adversely affected by this. Mm. And a lot of investors too, they, um, I mean, mm. the ones who get really serious with it, they, they do well with their job or whatever, they might have a lot of, uh, a lot of capital and what have you, but all of a sudden they, they become self-employed to do this full time. Yes. And that, that will, I guess, be a major hindrance to a lot of a lot of those people who who want to get better and, and want to do you know something different and mm. make themselves better by by doing this and doing it better and trying to make good homes for the good good of New Zealanders. Um, yeah, they'll be probably hurt more than most, or they will be exactly. Um, another in your first two years, I guess, of working. Yeah, I mean the, the people trying to get on the property ladder and trying to get going, they're, they're just or mm. trying to produce housing stock. They're just going to be held back by these rules and, and really what you're saying to the banks is we don't trust your judgment. You're one of the best banking systems on the globe with the lowest default rates but now we're going to bring these rules in to regulate you which is somewhat ironic when you look at the track record of the Reserve Bank of the last four years. Um, I'm no fan of Adrian Moore. Uh, I think that guy needs to go. Um, uh, you know, There's a few back in you. <laughs> yeah, 2020, 2019, 2020, COVID. Um, they dropped interest rates to early twos and flooded liquidity into the market. There's no need to do that. And so he, he could have been more moderate in his response mm. and maybe dropped interest rates into the mid fours or mid fives or something and just seen what happened and then dropped them down a bit further if it got worse. But instead, he threw everything at it and got him behind the government, I think, um, and overdrove the rates down, caused a housing boom caused uh, house price inflation, realised his mistake, into 2021, wrenched interest rates up triple, so created a boom and then created a bust. I've never seen a Reserve Bank do that. Mm. It's incredibly imprudent behaviour. So, and in fact, in, in my time, I've been, I'm 20 years plus as a chartered accountant in property, I've never seen 
a housing buff bubble form and pop in New Zealand. Definition loosely of a housing bubble is a correction of more than 20%. Mm. And, and we had one. And um, you know, we've had, we've had over a 20% correction in, in the Auckland market anyway. And it, it, was a, it was a fake bubble. It got pumped up by Adrian Orr mm -hmm. and his poor decision um, to pump the market up. And, and then he pulled the rug out. And unfortunately, the people getting hurt are the new entrants to the market or, yep. or the, the people who can't survive that, that, that don't have the cash flow. Um, so ironically, the very rules he's bringing in would have have probably stopped the bubble forming that he he created. Four, four, four years ago. <laughs> he yeah. he needs the rule, not 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 the banks. Yeah, people now mm. ask me they go, "Well, what's going to happen with the market? We're going to see the double over every seven years." And I said, "Well, the market's sort of changed what it used to be because it's purely based now on what the politicians, what the reserve, you know, government produce for New Zealanders and, and for the banks and what have you." And that's they didn't go up and down like a, a just at the click of a finger, and just like these mm. DTIs, if these DTIs were set incorrectly. All of a sudden, we could go. Well, the market's just mm. right now in a recovery mode, and it's doing well. It's just going up, you know, point two, point four. Ticking along, so, yep. yeah, ticking along every month. And then if uh, something come, come up now and stop that again, that's just going to hurt a, a, a hell of a lot of New Zealanders. Yeah, well, and, you, with this sort of thing, you get um, unanticipated consequences. Mm. Uh, and I think Chris Trotter said it. I want to read this out. Chris Trotter said it in his interest.co.nz article. He said this type of regulation is reminiscent of Muldoonism and the pre-1990 approach to bank regulation. Uh, blunt, cumbersome, inflexible, with all the adverse impacts and economic and financial distortions to which such an approach can give rise. Um, and, you know, we don't need to micromanage our banks. Mm -hmm. This is some smart guys sitting at a boardroom table that have no commercial experience telling our bankers who are doing the best job on the planet mm. um, how to, how to run the banking just after they created a housing boom and bust. Mm. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't come in. I really hope the politicians push back on this and say, we don't need this. Our banks are doing a good job. Mm. Well, on that, um, do you, I mean, it's been brought up, as I said, several times in the last 45 or six years. How, uh, what, what are the chances, and it's for all crystal ball gazing here, do you, what, do you, what do you think the chance of actually being at four Because they're talking about the middle of the year, aren't they? Of, of I don't know, but I spoke to um, David Seymour about it. David Seymour's yeah. not a fan of these, doesn't yeah. think we need them. Yeah. Um, he's obviously uh, in, the, in coalition, will act with National, uh, but he's against them. Um, and the government are assessing it, so it'll be interesting to see what the government's view mm. is. I, d I don't know what the government's view is. Okay. Uh, but, but as we're saying that uh, these settings at six and seven to one with the exemptions are reasonably well thought through. Um, if they do come in, uh, six and seven is at or above the current debt servicing ratio testing that the banks have in place. So for most people, they'll automatically qualify for um, the DTIs mm -hmm. because the banks are already either directly applying a DTI or they have some other derivative um, statistic which equates to a DTI at six and seven to one. So I don't think that New Zealand needs to fear these coming in. It's not a disaster, um, but it's going to adversely affect a part of the market and it's going to slow the market down. Mm. We don't need that. We're in recession um, and the banks are doing a good job. And with with a, that flexibility you said about um, where, you know, obviously if they, you don't fit the, fit the criteria of the six to seven or seven to one, um, well they will have, I guess, but by the sounds of it, what well, I'm reading is very, very minimal exemptions of everyone, anyone that's like now, if you have a LVR of seven, uh, 40, you know, 40% to buy a property, they, they have 15% or 10% or whatever it is can buy, they'll still give the, the money to them. Yes. But, but, um, so they're going to allow- to be less flexible. They're going to allow 20% of the bank's book uh, to be non-compliant with these rules, and they're going to increase the LVR non-compliance. Right. Uh, I think it's twenty percent. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to allow more non-compliant. Um, well, it's twenty percent of owner-occupier owner lending will be okay. um, will be allowed to breach LVR rules, and five percent of investor lending can be more than seventy percent. So, so they're they're providing a little little bit of relief in the LVR side of things as they bring in as they propose to bring in these DTI rules. Bear in mind that this is all. Uh, pie in the sky stuff, they're just talking about what they might do, <coughs> it's not in. But I, I do want to talk about one thing which I think is um, on point, and that is the prospect for growth long term 
with DTIs coming in if they come in. Um, and it's logical that if um, you know, house prices roughly have gone up 100% every 10 years, 87, 97, 2007, 2017, mm -hmm. house prices doubled unadjusted for inflation. So 10% um, per annum unadjusted for inflation, big number. So if you see DTIs coming in, I think that has to slow down because there's going to be a, a link between lending and income. Yeah. Mm. To get more lending, you're going to need income keeping up. And if income's not keeping up, then the lending won't keep up. So that's going to slow down mm. house price growth. And people um, like their income to double every 10 years, but it probably does every 20 years. But uh, Yeah, uh, I must go and have a look at that. I, I haven't looked at yeah. that. But it, many would say that is a progressive thing, socially, um, and it probably is. Um, but don't forget on the commercial side of things, um, New Zealand is very much funded by the by small business tapping the home ownership that they've got. Mm, absolutely. And they borrow on their back, houses back and then inject the money into their businesses. So you get these unanticipated outcomes. I, I think if they do come in, there'll all be all these frustrations and all this extra red tape that's going to slow the market down and subsequent governments will probably throw them out because they're not required and they're just going to be distortionary in their effect. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that's yeah, that one of the things I was going to sort of say about it. Is there any part of maybe it's exemptions? That's part of what you just spoke about then, and, and if another future government stops them, or, um, and as I was saying before, is different rules come in by the governments that's affecting the market and it creates these no, ridiculous uh, bubble, uh, yeah. bubbles and what have you, and then, then the falls when mm. like the triple CFA rules come in a couple of years ago, just over two years ago. Yeah, what a dog's uh, breakfast, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, so. Uh, unnecessary regulation, still frustrating the banks and the, and the, and the borrowers. Oh, it is, and we're in clients every day, still because mm. of the situation they've been in. Yeah. Yeah, Taking from a property investor, if you're a property investor, we had a whole lot of people just before December 21 that were going to sell their property. Then they found out they were going to be taxed heavily because of the um, bright line rules. Mm -hmm. And so they held off for two years. Well, in those two years, uh, you know, your, your, their property dropped in 19.2%, mm -hmm. which was and more than the tax pool, about the same as it probably they were going to be taxed o overall, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. So these are, uh, <coughs> they don't, I think, the end result. And we've also seen how rents have gone up. Uh, you know, I've, I've been in a place for, um, for t over two years and moved recently, uh, recently and um, that place has gone up $300. They like $300 more than I was paying them the day before and now. Wow. So I'm lucky they haven't been going with inflation of, of the rent market. Well, <laughs> but but, but well, that, that's happening mm. everywhere around in good parts of Auckland now. Well, it's interesting, interesting you say that. that um, I, I'm a property investor. Um, I've, I've got a heap of rentals and uh, rent's just going through the roof at the moment. Mm. And Crazy. when you start interfering with labour supply and market mechanisms, you, you get distortions mm. and um, the, the tax systems that we've had coming in with no deduction for, for interest, um, the inability to, to throw out tenants who are misbehaving, landlords just threw their hands up and said, mm. this government hates us. Mm. That, you know, they basically declared law, uh, labour basically declared war on landlords. Um, and landlords, many of them just gave up and exited the market. Mm. And um, the the new government is, re is re reversing the um, the attack on landlords. They're going to allow landlords to have no cause termination, so you can just terminate a tenant and then let make them leave, which is a big plus. Uh, they're reversing the interest on deduction rules, although the timing of that is still mm. up in the air. Um, and right line rules. Yeah, the bright line rules coming back one July to most likely two. If you've held it probably two years, you don't have to pay it. Um, so this is all all great stuff for landlords. It's going to encourage investment into the sector. But in the meantime, there's been a bit of an exodus mm. and there's a shortage, and now rents are going through the roof. And it's not just Auckland. We're mm. you know, know. We're, we've been buying houses for over the last five years in rural areas like Rotorua. Uh, we're not getting Auckland rents. Um, the values are still lagging, but we're getting Auckland rents down there, mm. and that's interesting. You know, your yields are really high in, in the smaller towns, so mm. that's what happens when you interfere with the market, you know. Central government knows best. No, you don't. Mm. You, you just distort and block the, the flow of capital and create pockets of, of, of profit. Um, and that's what I think about yeah. that last government saw, and we've spoken about it in, in this uh, interview right now, and, and mm. the people that are 
who create the jobs, create employment, create everything, you know, m most things for the New Zealand. Um, they're the ones who have been hit with this, and their business have been, you know, a lot of business have been closed down. Even Takapuna, walking through every morning, I walk in, a lot of shops there at the moment are closed down. Um, and these are the ones that, that, that provide the income for New Zealand to create tax. So, I know. you know, it's a, it's a vicious circle. And I guess the only thing with the, these DTIs will be if, the, uh, if, if that they hit the high-end people, and hopefully they won't, but they, there, will, there will be some, I guess. And that not, not necessarily high, high-end, mid to high-end, it's still, you know, create jobs for 20 people or 50 people sort of mm. thing. Um, oh, they go, they go, right, like they go right across the, the, the spectrum, socioeconomic spectrum. Mm. It's going to hit top end then. But I mean, yeah. just to repeat those exemptions. Yeah, I was just going to ask about exemptions. And also with yeah. them, is how you maybe see, Matthew, is could any of those exemptions create some bubble or non-bubble or um, w with them? But yeah. yeah well you, so just to repeat the exemptions, um, current lending you have, if you've got to refinance it, they won't apply DTIs, which is sensible. Um, Construction loans and loans for new builds. There's more supply incentive, um, which is prudent. Uh, bridging finance. If you buy a new property, and uh, you're bridging the new property while you wait for the old one to sell, then your debt will peak up for a period. They don't apply DTIs to that under the, under the proposals. KO loans um, for their first home loan scheme. Uh, business loans for business investments. You know, you buy a business, and commercial properties exempt. So that's all exempt. This stuff. One more thing that I haven't mentioned, um, this applies to the main bank lenders, it doesn't apply to non-bank lenders. Mm. So you could you could go uh, to a non-bank lender um, who are not regulated by the Reserve Bank. They tend, tend to charge about 0.75 more, um, but they're not, they're not governed by LVRs and, and DTIs. So I think that'll create another incentive for people to go non-bank lending. Yeah, it's been a Pretty, a few incentives over the last five or ten years, in fact, but mm. there has been a, yet another one. And the great thing about non-bank lenders is, yeah, you're saying like 0 0.7 or 8 above the, the market, that's, mm. uh, they used to be a lot more than that, go back a long time. Who are the main one? I don't, I, I'm all first tier for everything. Who are they? It's Resi Mac and... Um, um, uh, God, I, know, I've got a, I should know, I've got a couple of them. <laughs> I, I, I just send everybody to Chris Peterson Mortgage. Yeah, Chris Peterson, is obviously, yeah, we, yeah. We, I use personally myself, and and he'll do the best for you, but that's, um, yeah. so as I said, it's not the end of the world if you don't fall under. D d yeah, yeah, so there's, there's, there's non-bank lending alternatives and, and you'll be able to jump And don't be them. scared to go and see a, a mortgage broker because they're working on your behalf to get, they want you to get the loan, mm -hmm. so they're working on your behalf to get the best result for you. So um, just because a bank says no, I'm not a, I'm not a no person, mm. <laughs> if you're told no, it doesn't mean no, it just means there may be another way to do it. Um, what can you do to, rep um, to prepare? I th you know, these are just an idea that the Reserve Bank has floated, there's industry feedback. Uh, it's now with the government to decide whether they want to give this tool to the Reserve Bank to use or not. In that intervening period, if you're stretched on your DTIs, um, now's the time to apply for any additional facilities you might need as a buffer, mm. or to sell before these rules come in and create any um, adverse downside in the market. So. I think the early bird gets the worm. Think about how this might affect your household if you are stretched on income and you think this is going to cause trouble with your banking. Uh, then do any um, refinances that you need to do now. Go to your mortgage brokers, go to your bankers, uh, get your new facilities in place. Or uh, maybe get set up and sell. You got. Um, uh, Great idea, got, Matthew. <laughs> He's a, talk to Mark. Um, you could also look at um, 1 July as your, as your um, listing date because 1 July the um, uh, Brightline rules are, are being taken back to two years. So I think there will be a bit of a flood around 1, 1 July. But it normally takes the market a, a while to work this stuff out. So mm. um, later in the year people will realise they can sell and not pay tax. Mm where previously they thought they would. So early bird gets the worm. If you need to get out of the market, um, July would be a good time, I would say. Mm. Hey, one thing I just wasn't aware of that I may have learnt myself here today is uh, with, the, with the DTIs, if you refinance after they bring it in, assuming they did bring it in, mm -hmm. did you say if you refinance then you will or won't uh, fall under the rules? I think you said that they well, if you re fall under. if you refinance before they bring the rules in, oh, they're not going to change it. They're going to change. Yeah, then you get it under current rules, yeah. and then when the rules come in, okay, you'll be able to refinance it, and it's, it'll be exempt on the refinance. Yeah, yeah. that was a bit unusual otherwise, but yeah. Okay. So, so you need to push the envelope, push it now before the rules come in. Yeah, because the discretion's yeah. going to go away from the bank with these rules. 
hopefully they don't bring them in. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's the best thing. <coughs> and um, yeah, no, I've been saying people say, oh, what's going to happen? And I just, you know, because of these, because of the bright line rules that will have some effect, I think there's going to be a lot of properties come on the market. It's nice now we've got more buyers, sl slow to get any more buyers. We have since September mm. than the than properties. Now the properties have come up. They're, the good properties getting snapped up quickly right now, mm. and I think it's going to cross over a few supply and demand a few times during the year. So. Um, you know, GRQ interviewed uh, my last podcast, said about 5% they see it going up. Um, I think they're usually um, really conservative, but um, mm. he's been pretty accurate of things in the last couple of years, I guess. So, um, this is yeah, Jared Kerr? Jared, yeah. No, yeah from a so, um, yeah, but you know, went up 0.5, I think, or 0.6 of a percent last month in Auckland. Uh, 0.2, or then a couple of mm. New Zealand went down a point zero, it was all zero points, 0 0.2, 0 0.6, which is goes up 0 0.4 a year, I guess, every month, I guess it is about 5 five or 6 per cent. And mm. over recent periods, uh, recent um, markets we've seen, I, I personally love this time of the market, I think it's a good good time when it's just slowly, it slowly just creeping up, and it could be two or three years, who knows? Mm. We, you know, there's no crystal balls in this game anymore because the government can change it like that, as you said, or you're in Auckland and decide to do something. Mm. Well, um, the, the directors here at GRA, we, we all invest and, mm. and uh, one of the things we do is develop to hold. So if you buy, subdivide, build, hold, there's no tax on that because your intention is long-term investment. Um, and we've done a, done a bit of that in the past, but this year we've been buying sites because um, we our, our pick is next two years, it'll start to get going again. We're sort of in the recovery period. Um, recessions take longer than you think to flow through, mm. and there hasn't been a recession for a long time. No. And um, old sc old school guys like us can remember recessions. They um, they're harder and they take longer to get out of than than people think. Mm. And you know, I, I can see twenty twenty four being tough again, mm. um, more tough for business. I think the property pain has come. We've had the correction, mm -hmm. um, but as long as inflation's around, the Reserve Bank's going to keep interest rates up. Um, Adrian Hall's jawboning the market at the moment. He's telling us there could be two more rate rises. Um, Tony and it does affect people. We've had two people last week comment yeah. on that. Yeah. And, uh, worried it's going to go up. So well, just, just chill out, relax for a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that means half Other percent. experts are saying that's, that's not under the banks. Of, a couple of banks just brought their rates down in the last, what, three weeks? Or, mm. so, Real um, mixed messages. But there is. Tony Alexander, I read his article this morning and he said that the offshore markets are repricing and going up, and that's that's causing the concern here. Mm. Yeah, um, and he was bullish last year. He seems to be a bit more timid at the moment. Yep. Um, <laughs> but you know, what does a year Tony, matter? What does a year matter? I mean, I, I don't care if it doesn't go up this year. Mm. It, yep. you, you can't hold the tide back. We've had two hundred thousand people come in for net mm. migration, and uh, they've all got to live somewhere. Mm. Um, a large proportion of those actually can't buy houses because they're not permanent residents. Uh, which is interesting because a lot of economists sort of equate migration to be demand to buy houses. It's not. Mm. It's demand to live in houses. And from a developer's perspective, which I am, um, you know, we I see a lot of demand to, to rent the houses at the moment, rent's shooting up, but not that many people trying to buy the houses. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it won't be until those migrants become permanent residents or interest rates drop and the affordability comes back into the market that mm. I think we'll see heat back on property. It's, so it's all about interest rates. always going to be really interesting also because if you think of um, yeah. what's going to happen there, there is going to be a whole lot of people sell, going, Selling. sure, I can sell, mm. but also there'll be a new influx of investors coming in going, oh, geez, I only have to hold it for two years yep. without tax. So it's going to be, I think it's, it's going to be I'm, I'm loving this year. It's going to be very really interesting with the property, and it's just, uh, as I said, it's just going to cross over all the time. I think. And yeah, I think it's a little bit transition be, year from from down market to recovery back yeah. into setting yeah. up for a boom. We were sort of mm. sitting for 2011 to 13 sort of thing where it did stay like that for a while. But there's a lot of interesting things going on now that didn't have mm. back back then at all. That could affect things um, quite a lot this year. One thing I, I meant to mention about DTIs is. Um, a positive, I think, is that the Reserve Bank currently are loath to drop interest rates, mm. which would help with um, cost of living. They don't want to go there because they, they know that um, they'll spike house prices. So if they bring DTIs in, uh, they will 
be more receptive, I think, to dropping interest rates because they can clamp down on lending using the DTI as they drop the interest rates to stop a bubble forming. Mm. So that gives them a bit more flexibility. The LVR is a way to contain house price inflation, drop the LVR, less liquidity, less investment in housing. Uh, but Kiwis are pretty wealthy, and, and they they seem to get the money and push house prices up. You know, so, so LVRs are only so effective mm. in in stopping um, inflationary pressure. But DTI is, is a second lever. I think that will give them the option to drop interest rates mm. with less fear of those bubbles. I just said it could have stopped the bubble four years, three years ago. Had, had it, they bought that on actually then. Yeah, so even the, overall the Adrian Orr bubble. It, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. I don't think Adrian watches these, but he, 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 may, he may. He may now. So <laughs> I hope he does. Yeah. No, that's good. Uh, right. Matthew, any um, any more anything else you want to mention about anything to do with the property at the moment, or um, uh, we'll, we'll get you on with a bit sooner than we had last time. I'm actually doing mm. podcasts again. Oh, good on you. <laughs> uh, look, we 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 have decent portfolio uh, uh, between our directors here in the practice. We're quite bullish. Um, we're seeing rents go through the roof at the moment, so great for income. Um, they can't keep interest rates up forever. It's a short-term thing, a year or two. Um, when interest rates drop back down, house prices will go up. Mm. So what? ask yourself, what's a house worth in 10 years? That quite often helps you make a decision today on whether you're gonna get into the market or not. Mm. What's it worth in five or six years? Um, we have bought four developments this year. Mm. We're, yeah. we're buying, um, you know, eight, nine hundred thousand metre blocks in Auckland, specifically Tia Two South, um, Papatoi, Manurewa, those three areas, uh, Mount Roskill, um, Blockhouse Bay. We've got, we've got five sites running, four of them this year. Um, we're buying stuff that is fully consented with building consent, resource consent, and we're buying it at um, values pre the Adrian Orr bubble. Um, and you know, and it's fully consented. So they've held the holding cost of it all the way through. They've consented it. They can't get bank finance. They can't afford their. Um, they can't afford to um, land bank them. Yeah. And so they've just got to cut the assets loose. And so we've been we've been buying them up, and we'll develop them. Um, so we're we're very bullish on where things are going to go. I, I think now's not a bad time to be getting in if you can afford to do it safely. You know. mm. Mm. A quick question, we sort of digressed in a little bit, but design development to solve, everyone still seemed to think the cost to uh, develop uh, has gone up, or went up immensely a few years ago. Mm. Uh, a few very big developers in New Zealand have been telling me that actually costs are actually come down mm. a bit, I guess lack of, lack of projects and labour yeah. um, is probably as that. Have you seen that at all? Everybody's or? ringing us for work at the moment, because. Mm. We self-build, so we partner with builders in our projects, yep. and so no construction margin, everything at cost. Mm. And so through th those channels... Um, You've seen that very well, well anyway. Yeah, yeah, I mean people want work, there's, there's not enough work going around, all the tradies are ringing us. Mm. And, yeah. um, well, it's just typical of the cycle we go through, we saw yeah. three years ago they were bullish, they could do what they want, mm. they were paying 2,300 square metre for some good land, we now they're paying a, yep. or they were paying a thousand. I've done a bit more now, um, except well, for you, you get the great buys. <laughs> uh, I'm not the only one. There's yeah, no, there's, there's a lot, bunch there's of people. A, lot of them. Uh, yeah. a good barometer. A lot, a, lot of, a lot of developers actually, yeah, deep, have just come back in the market in the last three months. Mm. We've seen, yeah, I've seen quite a lot of them. A good barometer for what's going on is actually um, GRA's in inquiry, uh, yep. both from inside our practice and outside. And at the moment, um, uh, I'm a director, I don't normally see clients, but they're saying you have to come back in and work, Matthew, because <laughs> we don't have enough capacity um, from our internal teams. And and that is because uh, suddenly everybody's out doing stuff. Mm, yeah. So a healthy sign. Um, and that's a good thing for our ocean too, because the fish will stay longer in the, in yeah. the sea rather than on your boat. <laughs> so yeah. There we go. Yes. We, su we supported the Greens now. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, that's great, Matthew. Um, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure. Uh, and I hope you, uh, a lot of people got um, some some good out of out of today for what's going on and if these D what the DTIs are and the impacts of it. If it doesn't that come in, as we said, um, it, it's not in there. It's just at the uh, the stage of um, everyone talking about it. Um, we will have a link to Matthew's blog that we referred to a little bit in this um, this thing here. 
um, on this podcast and we will we'll have the gra.co.nz is obviously Matthew's business and we'll have that there which will be the same as the um, mm -hmm. blog anyway. Um, but we thank you for time and we value um, I mean GRA over the years have helped me personally uh, a lot. And um, We tend to get yeah. it right. You tend to get it right. Yeah. A couple, and couple of times I should have seen you when I didn't see you Matthew. But we work it out early we too. We, you know, ev everyone's talking about this stuff and there's a lot of, I think, um, incorrect stuff being spread around about it. We we study it because it affects us too. We're investors, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. If anybody wants to get hold of me, I'm on the GRA web, www.gra.co.nz. Jolly good. Thanks for inviting me. All good. No worries at all. Um, we'll see you. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next uh, podcast with another very exciting fella or, or woman, just like Matthew. Uh, I'm a bloke. I know. <laughs> yeah. And I uh, hope you enjoy your uh, this lovely summer we're having in the meantime, and um, we'll see you next time. Ciao. Thanks.